Hi there, you're listening to Soulful Wellness. I'm Kit Noonan. And I'm Kaylin Serena Stanton. And we're here to simplify wellness as you let go of being a perfectionist and embrace the joy of being you. Today, we're sharing the strategy we're using to manifest our dream life in 2024. Welcome back, Soulful Society. And if you're new, hello. We are so excited and honored to have you in the Soulful Society. Before we jump into today's episode, a friendly reminder, if you haven't already, please leave us a rating and review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts by January 31st to be automatically entered to win a soulful beanie, just like the one that Kit's wearing in our cover art. It is super comfy, very warm. I'm wearing one right now. And I was just going to say, <laughs> and Kaylin is wearing in real life at the moment. I can't get enough of this beanie. And we are just itching to ship it to the winner. We're getting all excited. So we will mail it to you if you're the winner. We're going to announce the winner at random at the top of our February 8th episode. So stay tuned. And we can't wait to see your reviews. Shall we kick off today's episode with our f- up of the week? <laughs> See, that was good because it's so out of tune. Even though there is no tune because I just made it up, it was still, you know, whatever the tune was supposed to be. That wasn't it. Mm-hmm, absolutely. <laughs> All right. We're, we're having a real actual professional sting created for us. So don't worry. You will never hopefully have to hear that again. And I had to ask it. I had to ask you what a sting is because I would call that a jingle. Oh. Well, I don't know what the distinction is, to be honest. It's like in the movie Forgetting Sarah Marshall, where his job is to create jingles for like commercials and and stuff. Right. Like I know what a sting is. I know what a jingle is. I don't know where the line is between them. I feel like if I were to Google define sting, it would say like a bee sting. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. The, the first thing that comes up is stinger. But I believe you. Nevertheless, <laughs> I do. I do believe you. So our new series. Weekly feature if you will. Our our feature is F*** Up of the Week, where we practice the art of being an imperfectionist by celebrating our mistakes. This week's F*** Up of the Week I'm going to share with you was more of the universe testing me on like how much can a woman take in one sitting. And I feel like the universe has given me my fair share of that uh in 2023 and it was like you know just for good measure so the first blow was as i was leaving for the airport my uber arrived and the garage is fully malfunctioning and my puppy wally is in the house so i'm kind of trying not to run around like a chicken with my head cut off but i am there's a lot of kind of valuable stuff like you have a full two cases of nice wine in that garage among other things. That's true. My biggest worry was Wally. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to lock the door so no one can access the house. And, you know, fuck it. If someone gets into the garage, <laughs> they're going to have a party. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> they're going to have a real good time with that wine. <laughs> so luckily, my sister and brother in law live two houses down. So I just cut my losses, get in the Uber and reach out to my sister-in-law to let her know the situation. And she's such an angel. She had it covered. So I could breathe that sigh of relief. I even texted Kit. I don't know. It was probably a voicemail that I texted you. And was like, Kit, my win of the day. And I didn't freak out when I... Yes. And I was proud when I thought that was it. Well, cause... I was really <laughs> proud of you. I was like, way to go. Because I would have started re- overthinking, reading into it. it. Does the universe not want me to take this trip? Does this mean something bad's going to happen? Like, yeah, no, I was really proud of you. Oh, thank you, babe. I think it was coming off the heels of two weeks ago, we had an episode where we were lamenting over overreactivity and just trying to work through that. So I guess I got some real-time practice and that's how the universe works. It's like, oh, great. Okay, uh, here is your opportunity. So I thought that that was going to be like the only, you know, the toughest thing of the day. Um, Okay, so the second blow was the plane had to emergency land due to a pressure issue. That was mildly terrifying. My pits were sweaty. 
I was definitely anxious, but we finally landed and I was like, cool. I also didn't catastrophize too much. Thought that was a small win. Yeah, even though you are now in the wrong city. Right. So I'm stranded in that airport making friends with strangers. American Airlines is doing absolutely the worst, which is not helping us at all. So the third blow is finally, I eventually just get on a plane to a different city in Florida entirely. And I'm like, I'm going to meet JC there because that's where he was. Yeah. So you're like, at least I'm in the right state. Right. <laughs> right. Of course, it's a huge, long state, but right. table I'm that. in the right state. So finally, a few hours later... And that's when I called you in the airport. I'm like, this is what happened. It was crazy about the plane. Yeah, you were crazy calm, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Guys, I don't know what's overcome me where I'm just like not freaking out right now. Or actually, you know, when flight fighter freeze, I'm a freezer. So I'm just like, Mm -hmm. you know, casually frozen. I call you and then you're talking about this documentary. Yes, air disasters. Yeah. This is a total tangent, but... (laughs) Oh my gosh, total tangent, but if you haven't seen it, y'all need to watch Air Disasters. Unless, of course, you fly frequently, in which case, do not (laughs) not watch Air Disasters. (laughs) Thanks to the show, I could land a plane in an emergency. I feel fully capable. Kit's like, Kit's like, the plane's going down and and she's like, I'm going to get up in the cockpit. Like, they're going to ask me and I'm going to fly it. No, you're in South Carolina. I'm like, just put the pilots on the plane. I know what the problem is. Just put the pilots on. I got it. You mean put them on the phone? Yeah, yeah, put them on the phone because I'm going to solve your problem from Maryland. (laughs) And y'all can get back in the air. So I get off the phone with you and then I finally get on this flight. Um, The pilot's like, eventually he's like, all right, we're going to land in 25 minutes. Okay, so there's all of a sudden a massive storm. And I already don't like turbulence. I mean, who does? It freaks me out. And it's been 45 minutes. We have not landed. I'm feeling us going up. I'm feeling us turning. I'm wondering if we're circling. And there is zero communication. Mind you, on the last flight, when we're emergency landing, the pilot nose dives under 10,000 feet so that the oxygen masks don't come down. And there's zero communication. And it is eerily silent. And I'm like picking up on all of the nervous energy that's just silent around me. But I could tap into it. And I was like, oh, man. And then I talked to the people afterwards who were like, yeah, I was really scared. So now I'm on the second flight. Pilot is silent we are like well over like 25 minutes of we should have landed we're facing insane turbulence and at this point I think my anxiety was like all right like this is the final like straw I can't take this so I'm sweating again I'm so nervous that I turn to the person next to me (laughs) I feel so I'm like projecting my anxiety I'm like yeah so uh this doesn't feel like we're landing and she's like yeah super weird I was like so freaking nervous finally land whatever i get there and then the fourth blow and the final blow was two days later on my little mini vacation i get violently ill uh throwing up for an entire day for absolutely no reason uh in miami yeah it was like your body just said i stuck with it i got you through all of that crap and now I'm going on hiatus. Like, I'm done. I'm off duty. You know, when you were like, yeah, you were really calm. I think it was just the throwing up was a delayed reaction. Yeah. To just like, I can't process. I got to like, let it go. When you're in the emergency and you just pull it out of nowhere. Yeah. And then once the adrenaline wears off, your body's like, F you. I got you through. (laughs) You're welcome. I'm done. (sighs) Kit, what was your f*** up of the week? Okay. We had no school Monday for the holiday. No school Tuesday because it snowed here. We had a two-hour late opening on Wednesday. I went to school. No one else went to school. Apparently, they had changed the two-hour delay to a no school day. No one told me. I don't know. Apparently, it turns out I wasn't the only one to go, but I was the only car I saw there. So yeah, got up, got myself ready, drove there. Oh, cleared off the car. Okay, I can't take credit for that. My husband did it. But still, the car was cleared. All the little things that went into getting me to school. Oh, I guess I should give the explanation when people are like, why are you going to school? I work in a local high school four hours a day. Okay, now the whole story makes more sense, right? And 
I went all the way for nothing. So I got there and when the parking lot was empty, I just had this moment of like, I know what happened. They turned the delay <laughs> into a day off. Something and I kind tells of had this me. sad <laughs> moment. Right, exactly. This sad moment where I'm just sitting in my car, stopped in the parking lot, not parked, just thinking, what now? Like, what happens now? And the part that I'm really, really proud of is my old go-to would have been immediately launched into self-berating. You know, the packaging of you're so stupid. How could you do this? What an idiot. What a waste. I didn't go to any of that. I had a thought, well, as long as I'm out, is there anything I need to do? <laughs> and then I was like, no, there's really not. We just had a super long weekend. <laughs> there's nothing left to do. Guess I'm driving home. I really didn't beat myself up at all. I just drove home. I was like, that's actually kind of embarrassing, but oh well. And I'm over it. Well, Kit, congrats on being a human. Thank you. Proud to be a human and really proud I'm a human who didn't beat myself up. Live and learn. Live and learn. So without further ado, today's topic is a juicy one. So we've been practicing the manifestation memoir technique, which is the art of scripting out your life for the year. So what this looks like is whatever you want to happen this year, write it out as if it's already happened. Like write it to your past self in a way, if that makes sense. So it's your future self writing to your past self. So basically you would date it like, I dated mine December 31st, 2024. And it's essentially a year in review. And you're writing out how everything has made you feel. If you're like, I went on that dream vacation to Italy. I felt so grateful and so excited and so in love and all these things. And you're tapping into the physiological feelings of what that feels like. And we've talked about manifestation in past episodes. We've tried to dissolve the mystery of it all and dispel the woo-woo of it all and the sort of magical positive thinking and really get into the nitty gritty. So this is our new favorite technique. It was so fun. It was so much more fun than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. I got way into it. Like I got deep it went on for multiple days mm -hmm. I'm not even done with mine yet but I'm like yeah. having so much fun with it it's basically like a written vision board yeah but it's even better no I called mine 2024 in review comma in advance and I thought how am I going to structure this because it's a year it's a year of my life so I figured why not just structure it in accordance with the wellness wheel I started with joy since that's our theme this year and I wrote joy, underlined it, and then wrote about the ways. I don't even want to say pretend because it's so much more than pretend. Yes, it's imaginary, but it wasn't like that childish using my imagination. As I was writing, mm -hmm. it felt real. Like I felt real joy writing mm -hmm. about the ways I experienced joy this coming year. Yeah, that's so beautiful. I actually titled mine Dear Mom. So oh, I, I was that. telling her, like, since she's my little personalized, my angel, I was thanking her for like, all of the beauty that she kind of helped facilitate behind the scenes. And so I titled it December 31st, 2024, Dear Mom. Like, here's what's happened. And I, I was inspired by your categorization, like, of the wellness wheel of it all. So I I didn't specifically, like, write out the categories. But mm -hmm. I, I started with, I think it was, like, physical health. And then sort of each paragraph. Yeah, it has been a different part of the wheel. And still have so much more to go. Yeah, well, that's the thing is it's a monumental undertaking, really. Yeah, like, yeah. I would never sit down and say, okay, now I'm going to write about this past year. And if I did, you know, I think I'd probably organize it chronologically. I'm glad I didn't try to do it that way. I'm glad I did it more of a holistic area of life. 
because it doesn't really matter when in the year I said things happened. Right. Yeah. So let's see. I'm going to pull mine out right now. So you're going to hear pages flipping because it goes on for many, many pages. So I started with joy. As I wrote, I just thought of more things. Like the more details I put, the more details came to me and the more concrete these things got. And so even if I thought, well, I'm going to write about this, I didn't plan what that would look like. I just started writing mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. and things came out that I almost kind of laughed. I was like, where did that come from? Mm-hmm. Who cares? That's awesome. I love that. Couldn't have planned that if I tried. Let's see. Then I went into professional life and I talked about Soulful LLC and our podcast. I went into physical well-being, body movement, spirituality, Uh uh-huh social slash friendships uh lifelong learning nutrition which is like food and all that and i kind of really went deep on my relationship with food oh that's so beautiful i love to hear that yeah i make lots of progress with my relationship with food this year yay oh that makes me so happy i want to give you snaps yeah thank you that was that aesthetic it was just really fun to be that person I want to be down to that level Mm -hmm. of detail, which once again, I didn't plan that I was going to go to that place when I was writing about nutrition and food. It's just where I went. Yeah. It's so beautiful. The act of writing in this case is such an art. It almost allows us to tap into a flow state it really is like a flow state it is inadvertently a spiritual exercise i don't mean that in a religious way at all but i do mean it in an energetic way where you're tapping into your higher self is really what this exercise is and not only is it empowering but it's fun and i totally agree with you we're like Things are just coming out pen to paper that you didn't even, like, I didn't even expect, I didn't even realize, or like, I figured, oh, this section I'd be done with. And I'm like, oh, I'm on page three of this. Like, okay, this really needs to come out. But it's so, I'm so curious about this art of writing. Because I think it gets clogged up in our brains and we don't realize what we actually want. We don't realize our personal power. I feel like I've been getting tripped up a lot in shame and guilt in the last week over, you know, not keeping promises to myself when it comes to my wellness and somehow turned a corner, thank God. (laughs) I think for me, it has like tapping back into that personal power or personal peace has a lot to do with digestion and sleep. So like going back to the basics, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that shame and guilt is real. And in this exercise, it's all relinquished and you can let go and just tap into your higher self and what you truly want and what you truly desire. And it is really vision boarding through writing. And it's so dang powerful. Shame and guilt are really heavy and they they sit on things and obscure them completely. And I think that's where putting pen to paper jars the things loose because when shame and guilt are lifted, you can find what's under them. And what's under them is really valuable stuff that you didn't mean to squash or hide. It just did when big fat shame and guilt sat on top of them. (laughs) Because like I said, there were things that I was writing that I'm like, where did you come from? But then I was very successful at just releasing it. Like it didn't matter where it came from. I didn't get distracted to following down. Where did you come from? I was like, I'm just embracing that you're here. (laughs) And I love this is so fun. Like I was having fun doing it. Wait, want to know something funny? Hmm. When you said shame and guilt and you were personifying it, you know what I pictured? What? Have you seen those Mucinex commercials? Yes. <laughs> I was picturing that that giant that green germ. blob guy. Yeah, and they're just sitting on stuff that we want and we wanted to come back to. But when we don't see it, it's out of sight, out of mind, and we forget it's even under there. Mm. This brings up an interesting notion, too, because... The act of wanting or the feeling of wanting is actually closer associated with lack mindset. Mm -hmm. And 
this manifestation technique of scripting is so much closer to abundance mindset. There are no blockages when you're writing freely and you're just continuing oh, your writing. The sky hand hurts was the everything's limit. Everything's just you're ch- channeling it. Yes. Totally. And it feels so real. And it's so much more empowering to be like, I'm so grateful that this happened. And you're tapping into this like super powerful, almost potent energy that's kind of inexplainable in a way. You just got to do it. Anytime I even came close to questioning the realism of what I was saying, I remembered that it's my imagination. It's my story, my year in review. So anything was on the table. I didn't have to put perimeters of the natural world to confine things. And that alone was so freeing. And I haven't read back over everything I wrote, but I've read back over a lot of what I've written. And there isn't anything so astronomical in there as to be impossible. Some things are possibly in the real world a bit of a stretch, but there's nothing that's just like, oh, now you're talking crazy here. And I let I was willing to have that happen. I was willing to go to to unrealistic places. So it's interesting that it seems not to have happened that way. Yeah, I think it's all about experimentation and seeing, you know, what comes out pen to paper. A little mm-hmm. bonus manifestation. So this is what is called the memoir technique or scripting. A another practice that I was just reflecting before we recorded this episode on you know that area of my wellness and I'm oh, I get excited kind of like tingly talking about this when you were talking about how career in the career section you were thinking about Soulful LLC and our beautiful beautiful community and the sponsors that we want to attract this year which shout out Recess uh-huh. really want them as our sponsor I'm putting them up putting that out there that I'm so grateful actually to have them as our sponsor (laughs) it made me think of I went to this coffee shop Foxtrot and this is back when I was still working my corporate job and while I took the corporate laptop to this coffee shop I put it in my bag and I whipped out my personal laptop and I sat there and I was editing our podcast you know with the big headphones like feeling really creative and fulfilled And I'm hacking my reality by tricking my brain as if that was my full-time gig. Mm -hmm. As if that's just who I am. I'm a creative entrepreneur and this is the only job I have right now. And I'm here at the coffee shop with the rest of you because I got to get this work done. And this is the life I have. This is where I go to do my work because this is the kind of life I have. I go to the coffee shop. I use the free Wi-Fi. I edit my (laughs) podcast. I got my lavender latte. It felt so authentic. And so now to fast forward to now and to be actually doing that and then to script out the bigger dreams that we have, like it was such like a full circle moment for me to be like, whoa, you can speak it into existence with affirmations. You can write it into existence with scripting and you can act it into existence by practicing the things that future you are doing. Doing it, being it, living it. Yeah. Dress the part, talk the part, act the part, go the places, meet the people, do the things. That truly is your life. It's out there. Just go start living it. That I feel like is the is the most fun part, I feel like, about the coaching journey with the clients is is visioning. It's so much fun. Yeah. And I feel like this memoir technique is a way to to hack to rewire your brain in a way to make it feel real it's truly the opposite of you know let's say like affirmations that don't really resonate with you we're like i am a millionaire or like i love myself unconditionally something that's like too hard this just there's no barriers it's just rewiring your subconscious There's a difference between something that you want to have be true, but you don't act 
actually believe it. It just seems like, haha, mm-hmm. wouldn't that be so cool if it were true? Maybe if I say it enough, I'll start to feel it. And maybe you can. But this activity wasn't anything that at any point I was like, oh, ha ha ha, I wish that were me. I believed it was me when I was writing it because I was writing it to explain what happened this year. So it had to be me. I believed every word of it as I was writing it. And when I read it over, I don't want to say I believe everything Well, I do, though. I do believe every word of it because I don't know what happens in the next 11 and a half months. So why not this? Why couldn't it be this? I do believe it could be exactly this. I don't get to lie in bed all day and then think it's going to happen. I have to go out and do the things that I said I did that happened and then in the end of December, they happened. Like, it's very real. It feels very, very real to me. There you have it. The manifestation memoir technique, the new vision boarding. (laughs) If you enjoyed today's episode, friendly reminder to please leave us a reading review. They absolutely make our day and they help the algorithm attract more people like us, like you, to the Soulful Society. And you'll be entered to win a soulful beanie. Thank you so much for listening. Huge hugs to all of you. We love you. We appreciate you. You're truly the very, very best. Peace, love, and light. Peace, love, and light. The Soulful Wellness hosts are certified health and wellness coaches. This podcast is intended to inform and entertain listeners on their wellness journey. This podcast is meant to enhance, not replace, listeners' care from doctors, therapists, or other medical providers.